Good morning. This is the Rambling Zone and Discipline Mind podcast for Monday, November 23rd, 2015. So my, what a weekend. It was a busy weekend. Uh, first, I'll give you a, a word hurting report. I've already written a little over a thousand words today. I'm at 44,100 and something. I wasn't really planning on trying to make 45,000 today, but seeing how I've only got 900 words to go, I'm gonna, and I at least wanna hit word count, which would be 600 words. I'm thinking of trying to trying to hit the nine, 900 and, and get the 45,000. There's only, you know, it's over a week from today. So yeah, it's winding down quick. Um, I'm, I'm kind of expecting that I'll be reaching the 50,000 mark around sometime over the weekend. Uh, we're going to the in-laws for Thanksgiving, but I will be taking my laptop and I will be writing. But yeah, we had a big weekend here. It snowed. It's been cold. Uh, last night, coming home from some friend's house, it was um, in the teens. And it was frigid. Especially since I haven't pulled out my, my winter coat yet. I'm still kind of wearing my fall pea coat. I probably should change that. But it's supposed to warm up again here. But I actually had to get the snow blower out because we had seven inches and, and blow seven inches of wet, heavy stuff. Ugh. So one of the things we did on Saturday was we went to see Mockingjay Part 2. And we went to like a 9.30 show because we wanted to be done and get home before the snow got too bad. Um, I don't think it was snowing when we got went into the theater. If it was, it was just flurries. I don't recall. There might have been some flurries going off, a few flakes here and there. Uh, but it had started to snow, and it was starting to stick by the time we got out two some hours later um, and then it just continued all day but uh, yeah I'll give you a warning there's probably going to be some mild spoilers here but yeah, if, you, if you haven't read the books there's some spoilers you know probably so you know take that for what it's worth if you have read the books then there's not a whole lot here that's going to surprise you you know there are some really cool things that they included. There was one of them that kind of made me go, huh? and that is they, they reused, at the end uh, of it, there's a scene where Katniss is, is, is going to be the one, she's going to shoot an arrow through President Snow's heart. And President Snow is played by, uh, expertly, by Donald Sutherland, who gets just the right amount of grandfatherly creepiness in his performance. He really did a good job. But she's going to, to kill him, and so they they hold it, I don't know how what you call this, but there's this there's this grand I, I don't know what you call this. It's, it's like there's this there's this passageway that's like a road, but there's there are stands on both sides of it. And so when the Hunger Games are going on, they would have the the tributes ride on chariots, what have you. Uh, and at the end of it is is this building where the president was, and he would look over them and make a speech and welcome them to the Capitol so they could die, which was the fate of most of them. And so it's, it's in the same spot where Snow is going to be killed. He's tied to a, a stone pylon that's just before this building. And, and so she comes out the far end. And this is a long freaking, pa I don't want to say passageway, it's outside. 
it's like a road. I guess it's called a road, but it's it's not a road that you really people. Are, it's only used seems to only be used for the ceremonial purpose. It's got to be at least a mile long, and she's walking it in this movie. And you know they they, they kind of jump cut things to get her through. It's just like it would take her like ten minutes. <laughs> to walk this thing and I think that's probably a little bit too much you know they got guys on the side beating the drums and I think that'd probably just be a little bit too much pop you know 10 minutes of her walking and not really walking very fast but just her walking with her bow in her hand and it's like really you know they stayed remarkably true to the book and this is the second half of the book Mockingjay they stayed remarkably true to it um there were some bits toward the beginning of this movie, which is in the middle of the book, where they took some things and they they compressed time. They jump cut some things. They hit some major points, but they were really close together, closer than they were in the book. And I get that. Uh, as they get more toward the meat of the back half, where they are storming the capital itself, I, I figured they would slow down and... They did. Um, And they did. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. I I got to see a couple of of my more favorite female actors that aren't, you know, kind of the big glamorous types. Um, The woman, and her name escapes me. I don't remember any names. But the woman who played um, Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones had a small part. It would have been cool to see more of her, but she played this military commander. So we got to see her. That was cool. And then... Uh, and I'm trying to remember the character's name. And it, I'm drawing a blank. But the uh, on Battlestar Galactica, this woman that played the commander of the Pegasus. Kane. Adm- Admiral Kane was the character's name. I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember the actress's name. She played this soldier named Jackson, who was like second in command in Katniss's unit. And that was cool. That was pretty neat. Um, But, you know, I I think the Hunger Games series as a whole delivers what people who read the books want out of movie adaptations. It tells the story, it get, lets you visually see it, it hits the high points, and it doesn't muck up any of the details. Too terribly awful. I mean, there are things that change. Obviously, there was one, one thing that changed in that, uh, what's it, Philip Seymour Hoffman, I believe is his name. He played Plutarch, and you know he died. He overdosed during the filming of this thing. And it really got to be noticeable toward the end, because it was like the whole. I don't. I don't. I was looking at my phone. I don't know what the time was, but it felt like the whole last forty-five minutes to an hour, maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't that long. But it felt. Like, it felt like a long time, and it probably was because there was a lot of time. The action was following Katniss, and Plutarch wasn't in the scene. But it, it, there was a long time where there was. You know, he was not there. And then at the end, you know, and I just reread this book, so I remember it fairly well. Um, and then at the at the end, when when Katniss, uh, okay, major spoiler, when Katniss shoots um, President Coyne, who was the president of District Thirteen, and that was really everything I hoped it would be. If anything, it seemed more real seeing it in the movie than it really did. In the book, in the book, it always seemed a little surreal to me. I mean, I I knew it happened, but it was just very black and white, you know, in in in, in the movie for me. But there is this one shot, and they showed it twice, where they show Plutarch's character, and he's just kind of standing there looking on, and then they went back to him again later. And he's standing there looking on, and he gets this, this is, you know, after, so that's before, and then afterwards they go back to him, and he just gets this little smile on his face. Oh, Lord. 
some poor guy just he spun at the end of his little road that isn't plowed and he got himself I, I hate that he 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 slid into the snow you know about as far as it takes for one tire to get into the snow and he is stuck <laughs> wow I feel for the guy because uh, I've done that but uh and there was one of this scene where, um, toward the end, where, where President Coyne was, was doing a, a broadcast, and they showed they showed uh, Plutarch just standing behind her. To me, that looked very CGI. The, the other scenes, which were more close-ups, did not look CGI to me, really, um, except for the, for the basic lack of movement, which makes me think that they, they took a couple shots maybe from other scenes and reused them and probably CGI'd the back background to make it fit where he was supposed to be standing for these scenes. Um, so that was kind of sad because you know, the guy died for reals. And, and there, there was a scene at the end where, where Katniss is in detention after killing the president. And... I believe Plutarch came to see her. You know, I just read the book. I should remember that. So I should actually go look it up. But in the movie, they had Haymitch come, and he read a letter that Plutarch had written to her. So I think it, I think it's basically the same same dialogue. They just made it in letter form, which was kind of nice. Kind of nice. But yeah, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. it you know, like I said, it did what you wanted to do. You know, there, there's a lot of movies where they just feel like they got to mess with it. Even probably one of the most grand and, in a lot of ways, well pulled off uh, book adaptations, being the Lord of the Rings movies. You know, he still had to muck with some things because he thought it told a better story. You know, he changed some major things. Like it always annoyed me that he made Aragorn reluctant to take the crown. Um, it, it's beyond belief that he. It, uh, inserted a a um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He inserted you know strife to the point where where Frodo sends Sam away in that relationship. You know, it's it's yeah. I, I just I don't like that. So to me, those movies. Well, I enjoy them, and they're beautiful, and I would watch them again and again and again. I've seen them several times and will in the future. Those two story elements always annoy the snot out of me when we get to it. But, you know, that's what we want out of, out of movie adaptations. Is that, you know, just show us the story. Let us see it. Um, but sometimes Hollywood doesn't get that. I, I do got to wonder... One of the one of the promos that we saw was for Allegiant, which is the third book in the Divergent series, which I've also read. I think I read that in October. Like I guess it'd be last month. Um, which I enjoyed. I mean, they're they're they're, you know, kind of a similar. They are a similar genre, and and, and um, as 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 Hunger Games, you know, a. a post-apocalyptic world of some kind and and uh, the character is this girl who's you know not totally intentionally challenging intentionally challenging the status quo and so I read the books I read all three books because my daughter had them I borrowed from her and I enjoyed them I probably like Hungry Games better but they were they were enjoyable and I know there's movies out for them, but I haven't seen any of the movies yet. I, I would like to at least see Divergent. But we're in the theater for Mockingjay, and this trailer starts up, and it's kind of weird, and I'm watching it, and I'm wondering, what is this movie? And the trailer was halfway over before they finally had some piece of dialogue that led me to, to, you know, finally made the light click on for me that this is a movie in the Divergent series. I had no clue. I, you know, so I, I got to wonder about that a little bit. I mean, they must be doing well enough. I really don't think I know anybody who's seen it and is going nuts for it. 
Um, but they've made all three books in the movies, so I guess they must be doing well enough to, uh, to at least turn a profit, obviously. Otherwise, I don't think they would continue them. But, yeah, I thought that was kind of, you know... And maybe it'd be one of these things where they're thinking by the third movie, you've seen the first two movies, so the things that they're showing you maybe are going to be familiar enough that you don't have to be told it's a book in the Divergent series. But a lot of it just doesn't seem very distinctive to me. There are a few things, but I didn't recognize them. But, I mean, the majority of it, it didn't... You know, a couple of the main characters are supposed to have... One character in particular is supposed to have a, a bunch of tattoos. And the actor didn't really seem to have any. The The lead character's got a, a couple of tattoos. And you can... She had a turtle... She had a turtle... Like, she had a, um, a, a tank top on at one point. You could kind of see him poking out a little bit at one point. So, yeah, I, I don't know what that means about that, that I, I just barely recognized which series it was from when it's been one that I've, I've more recently read so that's kind of kind of scary a little bit I, I would think if I was a movie if I was a producer you know a comment like that is not what I would want to be hearing <laughs> that somebody didn't even know what the heck it was about anyway um, I'm going to let this be it for today I'm probably into the teens oh I'm at 16 minutes I guess you get a long one today I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.